All right, hey guys, I got another hike coming up. I'm doing the Tahoe Rim Trail. It's uh, about 170 miles and it circumnavigates Lake Tahoe over in Northern California and uh, I guess Nevada as well. The temperatures I'm expecting are gonna be in the highs about 90 degrees and in the lows probably 40 degrees. I'm not expecting any rain at all on this trip and because it is a shorter trip, I feel like I have the opportunity to get really specific with my gear and the conditions I expect to face. So that is the most important thing when any gear list is coming up is what are the conditions? I'm using this backpack and my gear list, this is everything, I'm carrying I'd say about a seven pound base weight, but <laughs> two and a half pounds of that is camera gear. So you do the math, or I'll do the math for you, that's about a four and a half pound base weight. Now, if you're not interested in cinematography or film or taking uh, photos or anything like that, you know, for all intensive purposes, this is a four and a half pound base weight. You know, I'm trying to pair my love of minimalism and backpacking with very little, and also my love of making these videos and sharing these trips. Let's get into this stuff. For this trip, I'm carrying the Palante Pax Joey. I very much liked the Joey when I used it on the Arizona Trail. It is a 24 liter pack. This trail is gonna take me anywhere from five to seven days, and I think I'm just gonna carry all my food from the start, and this is gonna be enough. So a 24 liter pack, and my favorite part is these gigantic shoulder strap pockets. It's got four of them. So two really, really big ones and then two smaller ones. I like these a lot so that I can always have stuff at the ready and stuff accessible throughout the day to me. So uh, before we get into that stuff, you know, I've also got this uh, Peak Designs camera clip here. This is my girlfriend's and I'm gonna borrow it and see how it goes. You know, I'm not really sure. So on this trip, I'm not bringing a fanny pack like I normally do to carry my camera. I'm gonna use the Peak Designs clip uh, to kind of have my camera up close and at the ready. Now I'll show you my camera real quick here. So this is my camera. It is a Panasonic Lumix G7. I've got, I believe, a 12 to 35 millimeter lens on it. I've got this Rode video microphone on it. And uh, it's got this nice little flip out screen. The tripod you see underneath it, I am not bringing. I just use that in town for when I'm filming these videos. It's a very nice camera, and I will be carrying it up on my shoulder. While I've got it out, you know, my cell phone, just, I've, I don't even know what type of cell phone this is, but any cell phone will do for these types of trips these days. My cell phone, I'm gonna have loaded on it with uh, Gut Hook, which is a mapping app, a GPS app, and it's gonna have my maps for this trail. It's gonna essentially have my town guide, you know? So I'm only using my phone for mapping and of course, calling my girlfriend and, you know, taking other pictures, editing photos as I go and stuff like that, so. Now, the only thing I don't really like about this Peak Designs camera clip is uh, that I always have to have uh, my camera secured to a little fastener at the bottom, which makes it not as easy to use a tripod. On the Arizona Trail, I used this little tiny plastic tripod and I loved it. I loved it so, so, so much. But, you know, I'm testing out this Peak Designs thing just cause I wanna see what is the best way to carry a big bulky camera as I hike. So I'm actually gonna leave this little plastic tripod at home, but I did very much so love it. So, you know, just coming out here, trying things and, you know, I think both the shorter trails are great just because they are more accessible to everyone. You know, it's a lot easier to get a week off from work or two weeks off from work than it is to get five months off from work to go do something like the Pacific Crest Trail. And, uh, you know, I think it's a great time to kind of get out and try some stuff. So let's start going into other pockets here and see what else I got. In this shoulder strap pocket, I've got a microfiber cloth uh, sunglasses case. And I also have these Ombras sunglasses. These are kind of interesting in the sense that they don't have like uh, sunglass straps on the side or uh, whatever they're called. It's just a like a piece of paracord essentially. So you can wrap that around your head and tighten it up close and you know no matter how much you shake, these aren't really gonna come off. So 
So far, I'm really liking them. Um, you know, these are polarized sunglasses. I like that just with the, the, the paracord thing, there are less components to it that can break. And uh, you know, I'm excited to try these out more. I have my little spoon here. This is just a plastic spoon. Uh, I am not carrying a food jar or any cook kit on this trip. Again, because it is a pretty short trip, so you know, I'm just gonna be using this to eat peanut butter or other stuff where I may need a spoon. So, plastic spoon to go. I have a travel size thing of toothpaste, you know, nothing special here, and I also have my miniature little bamboo toothbrush. Of course, I have cut it in half. I probably could have cut a little bit less off it, but you know, whatever. Next time I do it, I'll make it a little bit longer. But I like to have those in my shoulder strap pocket at the ready to use throughout the day. I think a big thing when it comes to hiking 30 miles in a day or 40 miles in a day is you spend a lot of time walking. So, uh, you know, brushing my teeth on the go helps me get maybe an extra half mile throughout the day. Now, I also have in here a little flashlight. This is made by Rovi Vaughn and this was one of my favorite pieces of gear from the Arizona Trail. If I so please, I can strap this onto my hat and make it like a headlamp, but most of the time I just carry it in my hands. This particular flashlight actually glows in the dark, which makes it really easy to find when, you know, you're at camp, it's really dark out, and you're looking for your flashlight because you need to use the restroom or something. So it glows in the dark, it recharges off of a uh, external battery, you know, so I don't need to carry batteries with it. It has, I believe, three or four different settings, you know, a really dim setting, a medium setting, and then like a 500 lumen setting. So this is an awesome flashlight and I very, very much loved using it on the Arizona Trail. So in here, I've also got a little Swiss Army knife. Nothing really special about it. I like that it has some tweezers should I get any prickly things stuck in me. I like that it has a toothpick, you know, so I can clean out my teeth. Uh, I've never really felt like I need a knife when going on these long hikes, but for some reason, I just want one. I've also got some cheap headphones here. Uh, I've had headphones that have died in an hour. I've had headphones like this one that have lasted years. These are just dollar store headphones. Uh, I don't have any idea who makes them. I think you just gotta kinda try out different pairs and eventually you'll just stumble upon one that works. Podcasts kinda keep me going, but you know what else keeps me going? I've always carried a yo-yo on these long distance hikes and recently I found a smaller and lighter yo-yo. This is a miniature Duncan yo-yo. It's still pretty heavy, but it's about half the weight of the yo-yos I have been carrying. And again, this is just something that throughout the day can pick me up and really help to brighten my day if I'm not having the best one. Chafe cream I don't always carry and you know sometimes it's super necessary sometimes I don't use it at all but I find it's good to start out with some chafe cream on these trips just because when you do need it you really need it and if you know a weekend or however long in you find you don't need it just throw it out so some chafe cream or give it to another hiker which probably isn't good to share chafe cream so I don't know send it home whatever but this is just body glide uh, another brand I really really like is squirrels nut butter which is made here in Flagstaff Arizona and uh, that's all the little things I have in the pockets right here right now but usually I'll carry extra snacks in my pockets in the past I've carried guidebook pages in these pockets you know when you have these things accessible throughout the day it's really nice to just be able to continue walking and keep going without having to stop and uh, dig through your pack for these things. So I like having the pockets. Now on uh, the sternum strap here, I do have a tiny little compass. It wouldn't really be great for like truly navigating, but I do like to have it when I'm in cities or if I'm trying to read the wind or if I'm trying to read storms, you know, just looking at clouds and the movements of, you know, what's happening around. So. I have a little tiny Sunto compass on the sternum strap here. Sometimes I'll keep that on my watch band instead, uh, which brings up something else. This Casio watch, the Casio Illuminator, is one of my favorite pieces of gear. It is just wonderful to know the time of the day, you know. 
uh, without having to break out my phone and use my phone's battery power. But, uh, you know, to know the time of the day, when the sun is going to set, how much time I have, you know, to know the date and maybe when stores are going to close. But I really love having a watch. This one has a light on it so I can read it at night. It is wa water weather resistant. But having a watch is wonderful. Now, on this trip, I am also bringing two liters. I think the longest dry stretch is probably going to be 17 miles, though apparently a lot of people talk about a 36-mile dry stretch. Um, I've heard that there's water in between there, and it's not truly a 36-mile stretch, so two liters are good for me. These are just cheap gas station water bottles. Um, these ones, I believe, have survived the Arizona Trail and the Florida Trail. Um, so I've had these a while, they haven't broken on me. Nice and cheap and nice and light. The water filter won't fit on them. Now in this front pocket here of my backpack, I do have some tent stakes. Um, I don't really expect to be setting up my tent, or my tarp rather, a whole lot during this trip. And I probably won't set it up at all if it doesn't rain or if it's not super windy or anything. Choose to cowboy camp and, you know, save the time of not setting it up if I can. So if it's not going to rain, I'm not going to use it. But I have four MSR carbon core tent stakes. They're basically just long nails uh, that you smash into the ground. I very much like these. They are extremely lightweight. They are lighter than uh, the Z-Pax carbon tent stakes, at least the ones I've gotten. So I am just waiting for my Z-Pax ones to break so I can replace it entirely with these MSR ones. So that's pretty much everything on the outside of my pack. This backpack also has a big bottom pocket where I store a lot of my day's food in. So as I'm hiking, I can just reach behind me to grab out a snack and eat it as I go, again, so that I don't have to take off my pack and I can just keep on walking. So let's dig in here and see what else we got. Inside my backpack, I have this big uh, clear trash bag, essentially. This giant trash bag, basically, it just goes inside my pack. All of my gear inside my pack goes in it. All of my insulating layers, my clothing, my shelter, whatever. You know, everything I want to be dry goes inside this trash bag. And I tighten it up and close it real tight in there so that no water can get in. So it doesn't matter if your pack is waterproof or not, you know, that trash bag is gonna do the trick. So right on top, I have this Diddy bag here. It's just a uh, quart size Ziploc bag. Now this is mostly where I carry all of my electronics or where I would carry like medical things. You know, just a Ziploc bag, it's nice and cheap. Everyone's got one. They're pretty sturdy and can last a pretty long while if you take care of them. And uh, yeah, just a Ziploc. So. This is a Nightcore NB 10,000 milliamp hour battery. I believe it is one of the lightest uh, external batteries on the market. It's 10,000 milliamp hours, so it'll charge my phone up, I believe, three to four times. I found kind of in the past that maybe 20,000 milliamp hours is more than I need, so I'm gonna try out this one. Uh, you know, it's super light, it's super small. I really want it to work, and uh, I'm gonna see if it's enough for me, 10,000 milliamp hour battery. Something else I guess to mention about this external battery is it does have quick charge. So when you're in a town, you can charge it up really quick. You know, uh, you don't have to hang out and sit by an electrical outlet for too long. I've also got this dual port RAV power wall charger. So it's got quick charge as well. So I can plug both of my USB cords into it. When I get into town, I can go around buy my groceries, you know, do whatever chores I need to do. And when I get out, you know, in an hour or two hours or whatever, my phone, my external battery, whatever I had plugged into it is nice and charged up. So I have one cord that's much, much longer here for my phone in case I'm sitting near the outlet and, you know, I need that extra length so that I can use my phone while it's charging and download new maps, download new podcasts, audiobooks, whatever. And then I have this smaller cord for charging up my external battery here. So two USB cords and a wall outlet, all quick charge compatible, you know, so I can get in and out of towns fast. I have a microfiber cloth for cleaning off my lens or cleaning off my sunglasses. I have an extra memory card for my camera here. I believe it's 128 gigabytes. 
and I have a single port charger for uh, my camera batteries here. So it can only hold a single battery at a time, but I've found over a few years of testing out dual port camera battery chargers that they all suck. So this one is super reliable and it's just what I'm gonna have to go with. I would love to use a dual port camera battery charger, but just none of them have ever worked for me. So along with this battery charger, I have two batteries, two spare batteries, and then I also carry a battery in my camera. I also have an extra memory card in my camera, so three batteries total and two memory cards total. Now in this bag, I also have just some ibuprofen. I need to refill this package. I try never to use ibuprofen, but it could be a lifesaver if you need it in case you get injured, in case you get a fever or sick or something and you need to get off the trail. You know, having some ibuprofen to make you feel a little bit better so that you can hike yourself to help. <laughs> I also have a mini Bic lighter. Mini Bic lighter is something that, again, I never really use on the entire Arizona trail. I didn't make a single fire, but you know, if you are cold, if you are wet and you need a fire, it can be life-threatening to not be able to make one. So a mini Bic lighter. And in this bag, I'll often always carry my, uh, my ID, credit card, debit card, whatever. I just carry that in a little separate plastic baggie as well. But uh, yeah, those are all my small things. Let's get into the rest of the gear. On this trip, I'm uh, carrying two pairs of socks, one pair that's gonna be on my feet, and then a spare that I swap in and out every single day. These are Grip6 socks. They are made of wool, and they have a lifetime warranty. So some Grip6 socks, I'm trying them out. On the Arizona Trail, uh, my Injinjis died a little quicker than I'd like them to, and I think that's just due to being out west, you know, where it's dustier, it's rockier, and the ground is more hard and compact. They also support disc golf, which I'm a big fan of disc golf, so. Two pairs of socks. So on this trip, since it is gonna be a bit warmer than normal, I'm not going with a big puffy jacket. I'm just gonna carry the old tried and true fleece jacket here. This one's made by Kuyu, and uh, it is extremely, extremely lightweight. I like that I can hike comfortably in it, you know, pretty much in most weather. Obviously not during the 90 degree days, but in the mornings, and I'll probably sleep in it. It's got a hood. I've had it for quite some many years now, and it's hold up great. You know, it's got little thummy things. My one big complaint with it is no pockets. I hate that. But since this trail is gonna be a bit warmer, I don't really think it's gonna be needed. So, just a nice little fleece jacket. Now again, since I'm not really expecting any rain, uh, I am not actually gonna carry a rain jacket, though I am driving to the trail, so I'll have my rain jacket in my car and I'll check the weather before I go, but since I'm only gonna be out there for like five to seven days, I think I can be pretty confident about maybe what the weather's gonna be doing. But I am bringing a wind jacket. I believe this is a Montbell Tachyon wind jacket. Again, super lightweight and should it rain, this does provide just a little bit of protection from that. It will shed off just a little bit of rain and it will help me keep warmer. So, you know, just carrying a wind jacket and a fleece. So those are, I believe, the only extra clothing I'm bringing. You know, I've just got those things in my Grip6 socks here. Now onto my shelter. This is a Z-Pax 7x9 tarp. It's just a flat tarp, it's not shaped. There's nothing really special about it. I only need uh, five tent stakes to set it up, though I could use more if I wanted to or if I was expecting crazy weather. But most of the time, if it's not gonna rain, I just use this as a pillow. Underneath that, I just use a polycryo ground sheet. Polycryo is not the most durable material. And I think most people would probably be happier with Tyvek, but um, you know, for now, I just have a bunch of these things and I'm using it. Now we have my food bag. It's just a giant old stuff sack. <laughs> Nothing special about it. Uh, during this trail, there, are, there is a section where you need a bear canister, but I plan on just hiking through that section in a single day. 
I very much liked having it on the Arizona Trail, and I think I'm going to continue using it. Now, I think one of the only other things left is my quilt, my sleeping bag. This is an Enlightened Equipment 30 degree uh, Enigma quilt. I have used it on the Florida Trail, the Arizona Trail, and uh, I forget what else, but probably some other trips in between there, certainly overnight hikes. I like that it has a sewn foot box. Um, it's held up for me great, it keeps me very warm, and you know, if the nights are only getting down to 40 degrees, then I think a 30 degree quilt is gonna do great. Now, the only other thing in here is my sleeping pad, and I know everyone cringes when they see it, but I'm pretty happy with it. So this is a Gossamer Gear Thin Light Pad. It is just a 1 8 inch CCF uh, closed cell foam pad. And uh, I've cut it down to torso length, so it only goes from my butt to my shoulders. It doesn't really provide much extra warmth. It doesn't really provide much extra comfort, but I have been pretty happy with it. I've been using these pads, not the same exact pad, but these pads for probably 10,000 miles of hiking. Maybe a little bit more than that. So that is all my gear for the Tahoe Rim Trail. Again, it is a roughly 4.5 pound base weight with an extra 2.5 pounds of camera gear. I'm really excited for this trail. Hopefully I'll get to do some other hikes in the area while I'm over there in California. And uh, you know, I'll see you guys soon. If you like this video and you like this type of content, don't forget to like this video. And if you wanna see more like this or more trip videos, check out the other ones I've done in the past. I've hiked about 11,000 miles around the United States with a very, very minimal backpacking setup. And uh, yeah, subscribe to this channel for more and I'll see you guys in the next one. Woo. Uh, I forgot to mention, I am also wearing uh, Merrill Trail Glove 6s. Merrill Trail Glove 6s.